Welcome to Seesaw Activities 2.0. This training is designed for teachers who are already set up with an account and class in Seesaw and have taken Create Your First Activity. Be sure to have another device or window ready to follow along with the steps. By the end of this video, you will be able to create advanced templates with interactive movable pieces, add videos as the example, aka clone yourself, keep your activities organized with collections, and collaborate on activities with co-teachers. First, a quick refresher. It all starts with the green Add button. Get to the Activity Library by clicking Assign Activity. You'll find My Library. This is where all your saved, modified, and created activities are stored. You'll also find the Community tab, where you'll discover Ready to Share Activities. All right, let's jump in. Advanced Templates. You can create interactive Seesaw Activity Templates by adding shapes and labels in Seesaw. We'll show you how. First, create a new activity. Add your title and instructions, along with any other component you want, like audio directions or an example. What we're focused on now is the template. Remember, when you add a template, students can respond directly on top of it using Seesaw Learning Tools. Click Add Template for Student Response. You can create a template using the drawing tool, or you can upload a file you created in another program. Google Slides is a great program for creating templates for Seesaw activities because the dimensions of a slide match really well with the dimensions of the Seesaw Canvas. No matter where you create your template, you'll want to download it as an image. That means download it as a JPEG or a PNG. When you download it as an image, keep in mind that you will no longer be able to move text boxes, shapes, or other elements you added here. Once you have your template, go back to Seesaw and use the Upload tool to add the file as your template. Here it is. When you upload a template, it's automatically locked on the canvas so students cannot move it. The first way you can add movable objects to your template is with labels. Click on the labels button. It looks like this. You can find it here. When you assign the activity, students can click on and drag the labels anywhere on the canvas. You can also add shapes to your template. Click on the shapes button. It looks like this. You can find it in the three dots menu here. Students will also be able to click and drag any shape you add. You can quickly duplicate any shape or label by clicking the three dots and duplicate. This allows students to interact with as many shapes as you add to the canvas. So if you add five squares to your template, students will have five squares to manipulate when you assign this. You'll see a preview of your template when it's attached. Here's what it looks like in action. Students can move any shape or label you added to the canvas when you created this template. Pretty cool. We have two tips to help you. Pro tip number one, lock any object you don't want students to be able to move. For example, if you want all students to build a polygon as their first shape, you can lock that label in place by clicking the three dots, then lock. Pro tip number two, you can copy and paste emojis into labels. Simply add the label and paste the emoji. Emojis give you so many more options for making your templates come to life. Now it's your turn. Create a new activity and practice adding labels and shapes that students will be able to move. Part two, clone yourself. Don't we all wish we could be in multiple places at once? Now you can, well, sort of. Adding a video as your activity example is a great way to demonstrate a skill, give a mini lesson or reteach, model your expectations and more. Students will have your recording at their fingertips so they can watch it as many times as they need to be successful. To do this, create a new activity. Add your title, instructions as usual, then click Add Multimedia Instructions or Example. You have three options for adding a video as your example. First, you can record it right in Seesaw. This is great for shorter videos, as you have up to five minutes to record on Seesaw. For longer videos, you can upload a file, so long as it's under 500 megabytes. For extra long videos, upload the video to a video hosting site and use the link tool to link to it. You'll see a preview here when your video is attached. Students will see the video in the example when you assign the activity. When they click on it, they'll be able to view it as many times as they need. What's even better, students can rewatch it even as they're completing the activity like this. Students can click View Instructions, click on the example, and watch the video again. Pause now, practice adding a video as an example. When you're creating so many amazing activities, it's important to keep them organized. Remember, all your saved and created activities get stored in My Library. They show in the order they're saved or created, which means it can be kind of hard to find what you need quickly. Collections help you organize your activities so you can find them and assign them more easily. Remember, any activity or collection you create 
is always private to you. When you're in My Library, scroll to the bottom where you'll see My Collections. Create a new collection by typing the name and clicking Create. Organize activities that aren't in a collection yet by clicking Activities Not in a Collection. You'll see all the activities you need to organize. Click Organize. Select a collection or create a new collection. Once you organize activities into a collection, it's easy to find them and assign them. Simply click on the collection title under My Collections. And there's your collection. Any activity you have tagged to this collection will show here. Another way to add activities to collections is to click on that activity, click on the three dots, then click Add to Collection. Select the collection you want to add it to, and it's added. It's never been easier to stay organized in Seesaw. Keep in mind there are some limits. If you need to delete a collection, click on the collection, click the three dots, then click Delete. Don't worry, this will not delete the activities in the collection. One question we get a lot is, can I organize activities in the Activities tab after I assign them? Not at this time. Collections are only to help organize my library. When you assign activities, they'll show in the order you assign them with the most recent on top. All right, pause the video now, create one or more collections, organize your activity, and give yourself a big high five for being an organizational superstar. On to collaborating with co-teachers. Your library is private to you, even if you have co-teachers on your class. To share an activity with a colleague, click the three dots, then click Share Activity. The best way to share is by copying the activity link and pasting it in a text or email. Seesaw for school teachers, you have this amazing thing called the School and District Activity Library. You can share an activity to your school or district library by clicking Share. Fill out some details about the activity. When you click Update Activity, your activity will be shared to your school or district library, and any teacher can access it. As you know, all teachers can copy and edit any activity. When you share an activity with a co-teacher, they can copy and edit the activity too. A co-teacher might want to modify an activity to add modified or scaffolded templates to support diverse learners, extension activities, directions in other languages, or any other modification they normally make to classwork. To do this, they need to save or heart the activity, click the three dots, then click Copy and Edit. They can modify any part of the activity. The modified activity will save as a copy in your co-teacher's library with their name as the author. Remember, you won't be able to see this modified activity unless your co-teacher shares it with you. We have two pro tips to keep your workflow running smoothly. Pro tip number one, co-teachers can tag folders when they assign activities. When your co-teacher clicks Assign, they will click Edit Students, Folders, Skills. In the Folders tab, select a folder or create a new one. Best practice is to create a folder for your co-teacher subject or small groupings. Pro tip number two, co-teachers can view and approve student posts by folder. To view student work by folder, click on Class Journal or a student's name on the right-hand side. You'll see a folder icon that looks like this. You can find it on the right side here. Click it, then you can choose a folder you'll see all posts tagged to that folder. Co-teachers can also approve student work by folder. When they click Review, they click on the same folder icon, then on a folder, and they'll only see pending posts tagged to that folder. This helps co-teachers only approve posts related to their subject or caseload. Now it's your turn. Pause the video now and practice collaborating with co-teachers. You and your co-teachers will be able to bring the same level of collaboration and support on Seesaw as you have in the classroom. Research shows that when teachers share information, ideas, and expertise, learning becomes more accessible and effective for students. You did it! You're now a Seesaw Activities Pro. There's so much more to Seesaw we'd love to show you. Join us for more trainings at web.seesaw.me training. Thanks for spending time with us today. See you again soon here at Seesaw.